Hey, it's Sizzling Popcorn, and welcome to this brand new tutorial series on the PMDG 737. This is good for both the 600, the 700, the soon to be 800, and the later 900s uh, version of the 737. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, flight planning, how I do it, and how where I get my flight ideas, then creating the flight plan in SimBrief, importing that into the FMC, and then this series of uh, tutorials can then go further on depending on what questions you have in the comment section below. But in this uh, video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at where I get my flight ideas and creating the flight plan in SimBrief and how that gets exported out of uh, SimBrief into uh, directories on your PC. Let's get started. So I'm looking to make a flight plan for Edmonton. Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking to go from Edmonton to Vancouver because uh, F Sim Studios is releasing Edmonton uh, this weekend for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And so I, I want to do a first look video. So I'm going to do a Edmonton to Vancouver. What I want is a real world flight. If you don't want a real world flight, you can pick whatever you want. Like you can decide, hey, I want Edmonton to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. In reality, is there a direct flight? No. But is there like several, you know, legs that you can do to get there? Sure. You could probably, you know, go on. In that case, I would almost like look at like a Expedia.ca or .com. Get it on flights first. Ed Edmonton to Little Rock. So to Clinton National. Uh, to, let's just put these dates a little further out from each other. It might, it might because there might not even be a flight plan. What I'll do is I'll look at the results here. And this is, again, if I want to do real world ops. Uh, so here I could do a two stopper. And this two stopper. It would be Edmonton to Toronto to Pearson, Pearson to Atlanta, and then Atlanta to Little Rock. So it is doable, but it's not a direct flight, and it's actually not what I'm looking to do. Taking a look at the uh, departures, this is as of right now. You've got uh, you got two of them. One's in a Boeing 737 Max eight. The other one's just a 738. There is no 737, but there actually might be one down. There's a CRJ 900, which is currently in the sim. The uh, There's also uh, another 738. This is scheduled departures. So that would be uh, later on to tonight. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this one here. This is a 738. Uh, the 800 is not in a sim, but it should be very shortly. Maybe by the time that you're watching this. But what I'm going to do for my purposes tomorrow is I'm going to use a 700 for this flight. So we're going to go WestJet uh, Flight 173. Click on that. The information that I want here is... Okay, we... We know the, the airports, but the gate, so gate 56. So when I load into the flight simulator on the world map, I go directly to uh, Edmonton and then I click on details and then I look for gate 56. And then that's where I want to start my flight right at the gate. And then I'll also put the time to 530 uh, mountain time, which is their, their local time. Or I might actually put it like, you know, half hour ahead of that. So then that way if I'm doing it like a uh, cold and dark uh, start. You know, you, you want to simulate that. For the arrival, I don't even put the arrival in the world map. What I do now is because the, the, the destination, the arrival, that is all set within the, within the 737 in the FMC. Which is, if you're not sure what the FMC is, that's the... Uh, a little computer that you could program uh, in the center of the uh, of the cockpit. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over to simbrief.com and create a flight plan. Simbrief.com, uh, what they do 
this is now by Navigraph. Uh, but it was, I think, on its own beforehand. Once you've logged in, you create a profile. You're going to go to Dispatch, Dispatch System. And then you can either click up here, New Flight, or down here, Create a New Flight. So we're going to click Create a New Flight. Going to put in uh, WestJet Airlines. And then this is uh, 173. Departures from CYEG. CYVR and then the alternate is automatically put in this I am pretty sure is Comox BC then the date departure you don't have to do put anything here but what I do is I uh, the departure was at 5.30 p.m. local time 23.30 is the equivalent to 5.30 p.m. mountain time. So that's fine. Then we go to the aircraft. <laughs> the aircraft. No, we go to the aircraft type. And then we scroll down. And we're looking for the B737. So the 700. If, uh, if you got the 600, it's just two up. If you're using the, uh, the Boeing business jet, and that will be the BBJ-1. Uh, if you are using a BBJ-2 or 3, that's there. The 800 is here. So is the 900. The 737 cargo freight is not in this. So for that, you'd have to create uh, an aircraft. You would be best off to go into your fleet and create that. You should be able to also import it from someone else. In our case, we're doing it in the 737-700. Then down here, advanced aircraft options. I don't touch this whatsoever. I just le let it be. Here's your climb profile, cruise profile, descent profile, fuel factor, uh, departure runway, arrival runway. Uh, it'll automatically put in the uh, altitude. Your name and pilot ID for VATSIM will be in there. Once the flight plan has been generated, you can pre-file it to VATSIM or to IVAO. Before you press on generate flight, you can take a look at what they have here, the suggested route. Uh, you can also change to other suggested routes. And this is all routes that other people would have used. The thing is, is it might not uh, be on the current uh, air rack. And uh, air rack is pretty much the database of, uh, of, uh, of charts and procedures. So you, you always want to make sure that you have the updated version and that the flight route that you're using is for the updated one. Sometimes you can't find a route here. And when that happens, what I do is there's this other website that you'll want to get the route from. And that is edi-gla.co.uk. What this is, is a, a real world flight plane database. And here you can, you can search for by the aircraft type, departure, destination, ICAOs, all sorts of information here. I haven't really had to go here. I've had it once, but that one time, I still couldn't find a flight plane in here. So uh, that's when it gets a little tough and SimBrief won't create a flight plane in that case. So let's go back to SimBrief. We're going to keep this current route. And then you can see here the air rack cycle 2207 is the current. Now we're going to click on generate flight and it will now create the dispatch output and as you can see here, it's automatically saved to four directories for me. It's uh, saved it to the uh, the the route to the 737 and 736 uh, folders. It's also saved the weather to the 737 and 736 because I own both of them. And then later on, I will then have like a third and fourth folder for each. Uh, for the 38, the 738 and the 739. And the reason why you want to do that is because if you don't, 
you would then have to change uh, the folder each time. It, every time you switch between a 737 and a 736 or any of the other uh, variants. Before we take a look at the uh, SimBrief downloader, we'll take a look here at the dispatch output. So here you got your, your OFP summary. So this shows you your WestJet Flight 173, Boeing 737, Edmonton to Vancouver, Comox as the alternate. Cruising uh, altitude is flight level 300 or 300. And if you're unsure what that means, that means uh, that means 30,000 feet. Once you reach 18,000 feet, it then becomes a flight level. So 18,000 feet is flight level 180. 19,800 would be flight level 198 and so on. Uh, then you get the date, departure time, your air time. In this case, it's one hour and 15 minutes. Block fuel is the amount of fuel you're going to bring on board. Extra fuel if you're going to bring any extra reserves. Zero fuel weights and your takeoff weight. Those are going to be important for when it's imported into the FMC in the next video. Then you can see your routing uh, remarks. This, this would be also a place if you were to file to VATSIM. You can put like first flight on VATSIM or I don't put any remarks in this case. You've got again your, your map and then this is your paperwork preview. So this could be anywhere from like 20 to 60 pages or, or even longer. It's a lot of information. But we'll go into what information is needed from this to uh, to input into the FMC in the next video. Down at the bottom, here you can see your flight plan uh, downloads. So you can download it for different um, uh, file um, file types. So if you got the Aerosoft CRJ, you can download it this way and then you can import it right into the FMC. If you're looking to create a flight plan and bring that into the world map, you can go to FS 2020, which is Flight Simulator or Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Download that and then import it through the uh, load save uh, feature on the uh, world map. But in our case, what we want is the PMDG flight plan and the PMDG win uplink. So this will import the route and the weather. Uh, but we're not going to do that here. We're actually going to use the, uh, the downloader, the FMS downloader. You go to dispatch, FMS downloader, and this is where you can get the SimBrief downloader. Choose Windows or Mac. Here's uh, the description features and how it works, but it's, it's quite easy. What we'll do is we'll take a look at it right now. So in the downloader, we've got the PMDG flight plan and the wind uplink. We've got two directories for each, one for the 737, the other one for the 736. If you only have one, you only need one directory, but you have both, or if you have the 800 and 900 also, or, you know, multiple, you can always go uh, plus and then add another file. And really, because the file structure is the same, so all you got to do is uh, copy the first one and then paste it in the second one and then in the second one it would be like 737 you take off the 7 and then you put a 6 instead and then you would do the same thing with the with the weather because uh, the weather one will actually bring in uh, the winds and the winds are going to be important for the descent profile in the FMC so you'll actually be able to do a forecast of what the winds are going to be on descent and I will help to uh, create that uh, descent profile. So where do you find which directory are you supposed to download these to? Wherever you've got your community folder and this is actually the same. I've got this through the Microsoft Store but if you got it through Steam it's the same thing. So you, you'll then go here you've got uh, local cache you actually want to come back here to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And instead of local cache, you want to go to local state. Then to packages. Then you choose the the airplane, whether it's a 736 or 737. 
work, and then flight plans. And then you can select folder. For the weather, it will be under WX. The same thing, press select the folder. Then all you gotta do is, if you got both, highlight, copy, and then paste in the other one, and then just change that one digit. And here we don't have to export. It's automatically exported every time you click on generate uh, flight. And the thing is, is it, what it'll then do is it'll generate that uh, the route file in both of those uh, directories and then the WX file in both of those directories. Okay, it looks redundant. However, this way it saves you from coming back in and changing the file structure from a 737 to a 736. And if you've got the um, the Aerosoft CRJ, uh, you can uh, even add that in up here. But let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions and I can either answer them there. And if they do uh, warrant another video, I can dive uh, deeper into this uh, for you guys. But uh, that's it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you'll know when the next video comes out or when I go into a live stream. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video when we now import this information into the FMC. See you then.